Uh, welcome back to Quantum Computation Simplified. This is part 3. In this video, we will see how do we manipulate the qubits. So how do we represent a qubit and then how do we manipulate with quantum gates. So first let us see how do we represent the state of a qubit. The qubit uh, uh, state can be represented in a two-dimensional plane uh, where uh, we assume that uh, this is a zero state and this is one state. And uh, the state of a qubit can take uh, position anywhere in this circle. So this is a uni uh, circle of uh, unit radius. And how do we represent? So we can say it is alpha times zero state and beta times uh, one state like this. I mean this is typically we represent a vector. Right? And uh, we can also write it in a slightly different way uh, wherein uh, you, we know that zero can uh, zero state can be uh, represented uh, in a column uh, matrix and one can be represented like this. Then you simplify you get like this. So we now <laughs> know there are two ways of representing a qubit like this or like this. So whichever is convenient for you, whichever is easy uh, when you want to do the manipulation. The interesting thing here is it also means the probability of measuring the state of a qubit in, in the state in which we are interested in. It also means that I know what is the probability of uh, measuring uh, the given uh, uh, state in zero state. So that is given by take the magnet, I mean absolute value of the magnitude of zero state, square it, whatever comes, so that will be the prob probability of uh, getting uh, in that state. Similarly for uh, ket1 or st uh, um, state1, it is uh, beta square and the sum of probabilities should be 1 since we are working with uh, only two states so it's something like uh, uh, when we sp toss a coin uh, the uh, probability of getting uh, head is 0.5 tail is 0.5 but the sum of the probability is uh, 1 right so this is one way of representing qubit and there is a better way of uh, representing qubit uh, again uh, scientists have come out uh, that's called block sphere representation. So in which instead of a uh, circle they brought a uh, sp sphere. Again this sphere also has got uh, unit radius. So how do we represent a zero state and one state? So they are the basis states. Eh? So they are express I mean they are represented in the z axis and uh, the zero is given at uh, I mean it's at the north pole and one is at the south pole. So what is at the equator? Equator, okay, anywhere in between is a superposition state at, and at the equator they have equal probabilities of getting 0 and 1, that's all. And it is represented in a slightly different way in this pair. And it's given as cos theta by 2 times uh, 0 state. So what is theta? The, th the theta is the angle it makes with respect to z-axis plus e i pi sine theta by 2 times 1 state. So what is pi? You project the position onto this plane and the angle it makes with respect to x-axis. Clear? The uh, y is better than this so it has got an additional information like this. See otherwise these two are same like you know sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. So same thing uh, like you get uh, I mean uh, similar to this but this has got additional phase information which is not there in this one. So suppose you have another qubit uh, at this point so with the same uh, radius I mean uh, circle I would say and uh, the magnitude may be same but um, obviously it is not in the exactly same state so that is something called phase information so this is called phase information angular information so that is useful when we manipulate uh, the qubit there are some more definitions which uh, just see that and we will not get into that it's not required for a beginner I mean to start with so let's 
try to do something more on the qubit. So let's define a state of a qubit which is not completely uh, 0 or 1 but something like this. So again you will see a lot of uh, 1 by square root 2 comes frequently in uh, when we work on the state of a qubit. It's mainly because we have seen earlier uh, the magnitude of uh, the absolute magnitude square for 0 state plus absolute magnitude square for 1 state when the sum should be 1. So uh, 1 by square root 2 square is 1 by 2. So and this is this also will become 1 by 2 when you take the absolute value. So 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2, 1. So that's the reason you will see more uh, square root 2 terms when you work on a qubit. In the vector form it can be represented. We have seen earlier uh, 1 by root 2 uh, and i root 2. So, so this is a column vector. So it can also be represented in row vector and then uh, we have also simplified 1 by square root like this. I mean you put a number and uh, typically they are all com both are complex numbers but uh, in this case they don't have imaginary term. The first uh, the zero uh, coefficient. So similarly uh, this one doesn't have a real coefficient. I mean a real like part. So it has got only uh, imaginary part and uh, interestingly you can see here both numbers are same. So what does it mean? Uh, when we measure the qubit the probability of getting uh, 0 and 1 is same and uh, it will be 0.5. Right? So I mean you, you will know more about uh, qubits uh, if you go to wiki page but I think for time being this would be sufficient for us to proceed. Qubit measurement, uh, this is an important thing, but uh, we don't have to worry how it is measured, what happens. I mean, we, we should only know what happens at the time of measurement. The amplitude of uh, the state vector contains information on probability, but once measured, the state is known with certainty. So there is no more uncertainty. I mean, we know very well it will be either 0 or 1, like a classical bit. For example, uh, if the state is given like this, uh, before measurement and once measured it collapses to 0 or 1 and it will not change its state further. No more uh, um, entanglement, superposition and things like that because it will behave like a classical bit. Therefore during quantum computation we must allow the qubits to explore more complex states in order to represent our problem and then measurements are only done when we need to extract an output not in between so we should be very very careful that measurements should be done only at the end and there is another uh, equation uh, given for uh, measuring uh, and its probability probability of measuring a state a given state in the required uh, expected state for example typically we work on 0 or 1 right so i mean that is what is given if the probability of measuring zero state is given by inner product we have seen it earlier inner product of the state which we are interested and the state in which qubit exists and then take the magnitude the uh, and square it you get the probability and it looks little odd but uh, you will understand once uh, when we do with an example in the next slide so initially we saw uh, working with a single uh, qubit but in order to get power from the quantum computers uh, you just can't work with only one qubit you need uh, more qubits so let us see how do i represent two qubits first so two qubits like a single qubit has uh, two possible states zero and one two qubits will have four possible states what are they zero 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 one one zero one one and they can be written like this i mean they can be represented uh, by this equation and the probability of measuring um, this state in 0 0 state is given by I mean we have seen the previous formula you take a bra of 0 0 ket of pi that is nothing in a uh, inner product and then take the absolute value square it so this can be represented like this and this can be represented like this I mean they're all one and the same then when you multiply because of zero other terminologies other coefficients will go up and only alpha is retained and then uh, absolute value take the magnitude you will get the probability of zero, zero state measurement 
And interestingly, say, like a single qubit case, the sum of measuring all uh, cube, uh, uh, states is 1. And uh, here, we, uh, though we have seen two qubits, they are not at entangled. So how do I know whether they are in entangled or not entangled? So a two qubit state is in an entangled state if and only if there not exist two one qubit states like this. So when I'm given a state, if I'm able to separate it out into two qubit state, then they are not entangled. Okay, so we, I mean this is sufficient for us to proceed to write a simple code, but uh, you should know more about uh, how do we represent the entangled because uh, some of the algorithms uh, they use, I mean most of the algorithms they use uh, entangled uh, uh, states and then uh, we also need to know what happens if uh, multiple qubits but uh, you, you, you will from here you will come to know that how they are uh, handled or they will be handled. So let's move to the quantum gates very very important because all the manipulations whatever coding you do they are all with respect to some gates or other so in classical computers we have gates like and or uh, nand xr and uh, like that okay suppose you want to add uh, two numbers what you do you and it and uh, xr it right so similarly we'll be manipulating uh, the state of qubits uh, with uh, the gates given here. Of course, th this list is not complete. Uh, we can have many more gates uh, and you can develop your own gates or you can have a combination of these gates, something like that. So typically, I mean, it's you can see here, for every gate, there is a name, there is a symbol and there is a matrix, unitary matrix connected to the gate. So y you cannot have a gate without a corresponding unitary matrix. So every time when I apply a gate, it means that I'm going to apply a matrix operation. Okay, so we'll see some of these gates and uh, we'll apply this matrix and see what happens. So when I draw a circuit, particularly in, uh, I mean, uh, some of the simulators or some of the, I mean, uh, quantum computers will be directly uh, going and uh, making a circuit. So whenever we start a circuit, we are given uh, uh, qubits, some qubits, but in general, they all start with uh, zero state. And then uh, we'll also be given some uh, classical bits. So in this case, I want to make this as one state. So I'll uh, bring uh, um, X uh, gate here, so and then it will become one. And then I'll do some operations like this, control not or uh, Tafali like that. And finally, at the end of all my computations, I have to go and measure what is the state, which uh, state of the qubit, which I'm interested. So that is what uh, is given here. I'll make a measurement simple that I mean that, that's exactly you will be doing uh, to start with afterwards you may be writing more complex algorithms and then uh, I mean which you will come to know so let's start with our famous Kadamot gate so this is very important gates it's widely used to set a qubit in superposition that's why it is very important and we have seen this matrix earlier uh, when we were doing uh, unitary matrices. It maps the basic basic state 0 to this. It also, we have seen it. Similarly, it um, maps uh, one state to this. And uh, these two are superposition states. It means they have combinations of 0 and 1 equally. So, and the output states are also represented like this. So this is represented like plus and this is represented minus to indicate uh, there is a phase different. And why like this? Maybe to confuse us, but let's not, I mean, we will not get confused now because we know what does it mean, right? So when uh, you start uh, with the zero state, when you apply a Hadamard gate, so from here it comes to the equator position from north pole it was facing now it will face equator so which will have both zero and one on equal portions so that is why it's in a superposition state right simple 
So control not. So this is an interesting uh, gate. Work, I mean, uh, it works with two qubit. So they are called, one is called control, I'm sorry, and the other one is uh, target bit. So what the uh, control bit does on q con target bit is, whenever control bit is having value one, then it will flip the value of um, target bit. So you can see the truth table. So whenever a control is one, so it's here one and here one. Uh, and that time what happens? The target bit is flipped, zero to one and one to zero. And the other, uh, whenever it is zero, it doesn't do any change. So, and how do we get it? So what is the unity matrix? So this is the unity matrix. So when we apply it to one one state, so one one state can be expressed like this in um, column matrix and when you multiply you get the answer like this is nothing but zero one state so when uh, c naught is applied on one one you you get zero one very simple actually i mean the <laughs> mathematics because we are working with only zero and one not very complicated i mean as a beginner you don't really need that complex uh, mathematics and there are some more gates so we have seen the x gate earlier so it's also called a not gate so it switches the amplitudes of states as 0 and 1 so when it is 0 it makes it to 1 and when it is 1 it makes it to 0 so it rotates the state around x axis that's why it's called x gate so it rotates like this okay and the uh, y and z gates uh, i mean y gate also does similar way and z gate when it is at this state it cannot do anything because but when it is in some other state certainly it will uh, rotate along the z axis and these three gates are uh, called poly gates another scientist name We'll move on to another gate, I um, mean Toffoli gate. So this is an extension of uh, C naught gate. So in this, uh, there, uh, there are two control bits and only one target bit. So the target bit value is flipped, uh, changed only when both the controlled gates are set. So this is the truth table. So up to this, there is no change. You can see here. I mean, they whatever input you give, output will come. But when both the gates are set, the target bit gets uh, flipped. 0 to 1, 1 to 1. Very simple. That's all the quantum computing manipulations. So with this, we'll jump on to understand an algorithm uh, making use of uh, whatever we have learned and before that shall we summarize what we have learned until now we have seen qubit can take any state zero or one or a combination of both so that's why it's called a superposition qubits can be entangled to get two power n states simultaneously minimum knowledge of mathematics is sufficient to start that anyway you will decide I uh, mean you will accept when you go to the next video. States of qubits can be manipulated to do the required computation. Algorithms are written with gates represented by unitary matrices. States of qubits can be measured and the outcome will be like classical bits. Of course this when you see a uh, measured value then you will appreciate it. So with this we will conclude this video. So I hope to see you in the next video soon.